It's a Tuesday, November 2nd, and the time for your body list to be in morning news at week. The Democratic Labour Party's candidate for St. James Central, Paul Gibson, has strongly refuted suggestions that he lied to constituents about the future of the fish market located at Paines Bay, St. James. During the opening of the market on Monday, the Member of Parliament, Kerry Simmons, took his opponent to task for suggesting that the market, which was closed for many months during the Highway 1 rehabilitation project, was being sold to foreign investors. Everybody who does business at this market must have felt a sense of dread to hear that a, a, a person seeking office were tell a wicked and malicious lie such as was told. Now I want to make my position very clear on a few things here this morning. As long as I have anything to do with it, this constituency will not be used as a cradle to nurture the ambitions of political tree card men and political confidence tricksters who feel that the way to win a, a, a foothold or to hold in public life is by telling wanton and, and, and disgraceful untruths. Gibson contends, however, that uh, there was a clear difference between asking a question and stating a claim. He told Barbados today that the Minister of Maritime Affairs and the Blue Economy was asked whether or not the facility was being sold. The question, he said, was answered that it was not. New regulations are coming to prevent fishermen from casting their nets to catch certain species of fish and to restrict their access to certain sections of the island's coastline. So said Minister of Maritime Affairs and the Blue Economy, Cook Humphrey, who disclosed on Monday that the changes are intended to protect certain endangered species and create a more sustainable marine environment. Humphrey, who was speaking during the opening of the fish market at Painsby St. James, explained that the measures were only agreed upon after extensive consultation with fishermen. But as we go forward, once these regulations are passed, we will not allow the use of CNET for the cash in the chops. That will be the part of fish and so on. And they've agreed. The other thing that we've also agreed upon in these new regulations is that we will allow pot fishing. Many people again have asked me to ban all kinds of pot fishing as if people don't have to eat in Barbados. And so we've said no, we will allow pot fishing, but that the pot fishermen now have to be registered with the ministry so that we could have an idea as to who's, pot, who's doing the pot fishing. They have to have licenses and so on so that we could regulate and monitor the industry going forward. So that while we would allow pot fishing, it will be now in a much more controlled way. We've also put in these regulations because some pot fishermen have complained for others that you cannot trouble somebody else's pot. That now becomes illegal. And I must tell you that in consultation with the Coast Guard, because we've worked with the Coast Guard, the persons in the Coast Guard and the persons in the fishing industry have already told me they have a good relationship with the Coast Guard, but we did not have the legislation in place to allow the Coast Guard to be able to effectively enforce that which they must enforce. Minister Humphrey also announced the creation of areas that may be closed to catching certain species of fish and or where fishing is altogether prohibited in marine management areas. The new regulations would also allow us closed areas so that if it is deemed necessary, and that is not the case now, if it is deemed necessary, there could be some areas that we say are closed for fishing, if it is deemed necessary. We could also have, as we have with turtles, closed seasons for some particular fisheries. The whole point here is to be able to maintain fishing, to allow people to eat, but to be able to do it sensibly and to be able to do it sustainably. And I believe these new regulations allow us to be able to do that. So over the next few months, there's going to be intense consultation with the public to be able to explain what it is that we are seeking to do. The inaugural service of a German airline, Eurowings Discover, touched down in Barbados on Monday afternoon from Frankfurt with 105 passengers on board. Senior Business Development Officer of the European Office of Eurowings Discover, Debbie Moore, who was on the flight, told reporters that despite hesitancy among some travelers due to the COVID-19 pandemic, 
The reviews so far for the inaugural trip have been great. We continue to market quite strong because we, of course, know we still need to have a presence in the market. The truth is that um, the German market has changed a bit and persons who were booking previously maybe six months in advance, they're now booking um, quite shorter. So six weeks, maybe even four weeks or two weeks before they fly. Um, so this is quite um, a good advantage for us because persons are still looking to travel. They're looking to get away from the gray skies. There's regional and international news after this short break. I'll admit, when the COVID-19 vaccines were first introduced, I was a bit skeptical. I wondered how did they create these vaccines so quickly? I heard so many theories and was suffocated by all the noise. But once I did my own research and began speaking to my friends in the field, I got the facts and decided to take the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine. I am now proud to say that I'm fully vaccinated. I am one who believes in choice, but I also know that with each choice comes consequences. COVID-19 vaccines have been proven to provide a layer of protection against COVID-19. We have been in this situation for far too long now. It is time to get our lives back. We still need to social distance, wash our hands and mask up, but having an extra layer of protection with the COVID-19 vaccines, we should feel more happy that we're protecting ourselves, our family and friends, our colleagues and our clients. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To news from other region, Guyana's COVID-19 death toll increased to 925 on Sunday, with health officials reporting that the number of active cases in the country is still on the high end. More from a news source, Guyana. Officials said while there has been a decline in the number of persons needing ICU care, the Ministry of Health remains worried about the number of cases still climbing. The health minister is reminding persons to get vaccinated, and the more than 130,000 persons who are still to return for their second dose shots are being encouraged to do so soon. On the international front, France says it will delay implementing measures against the UK while talks over post-Brexit fishing rights continue. Moin this report from France 24. A little more breathing room as the threat of French sanctions on the United Kingdom still looms after French President Emmanuel Macron opened the door to further negotiation over the ongoing fishing dispute. Since Monday afternoon, discussions have resumed on the basis of a proposal I made to Prime Minister Johnson. The talks need to continue. France wants the UK to hand licences to EU fishermen waiting to work in the English Channel and had initially given London until Tuesday to act. Since the UK left the EU, the British decide who's entitled to fish in their waters, following conditions negotiated in the post-Brexit trade agreement. The French government says the UK hasn't stood by its commitments and is threatening to retaliate by barring British boats from French ports, among other sanctions. British authorities have urged France to retract those threats or face an escalation. If the French have behaved unfairly, you know, it's not within the terms of the trade deal. And if somebody behaves unfairly in a trade deal, you are entitled to take action against them and seek some compensatory measures. And that is what we will do if the French don't back down. The British say the only fishermen they turned away lacked the necessary paperwork. For the French, the British are demanding additional documents that small boat owners don't have. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidestoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.